So hello and welcome to our projector fireside gathering. I think we're up to number six. And today we have Tom Weston. And I'm looking forward to talking with Tom. Uh, Tom's just figuring out some of the tech stuff. So welcome, Tom. And um, I want to uh, share a little bit with you about Tom. For those of you that, that haven't met Tom or haven't seen his, his intro, um, so I'm just going to read that out shortly. Uh -huh. So the idea here is we're going to have a little look at Tom's chart. Tom has a really interesting chart, and so that's one of the reasons why we are, we, 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 I'm very much looking forward to talking with Tom. And <laughs> Tom is... He's taught in an alternative uh, private therapeutic high school and in New York City for 20 years. One year ago, at age 51, he felt an overwhelming call to quit without a job lined up or any real plan. I guess it was one of those moments. Four months later, he discovered human design. So that means he's eight months into the experiment. And his departure, almost with most of his life made a lot more sense both in retrospect and in going forward uh, so this i think is something that a lot of projectors can can resonate with this feeling of you know now we understand that we're projectors it's like aha now some of these things make sense and also going as far as going forward so tom has spent the last year waiting for the invitation while dealing with some health issues he still teaches three yoga classes a week and is currently awaiting his disability hearing date. So very much looking forward to uh, having a little look at Tom's chart. And I'm gonna just pull up his chart to start with and give a bit of an overview of some of the things that we can, uh, we can take a little look at. And also to um, being able to, uh, you know, understand some of, some of his chart and, but really hear from Tom about some of his life. And there you are, Tom, hey. I am. Okay, cool. There you are. Right. Fantastic. Okay. Excellent. So, welcome, welcome. How are you doing, Thank man? You. Yes, I'm all right. Uh, actually got through that a little better than I would have thought. I, the anxiety started to, started to well up, and I'm not good at this stuff, but I'm glad we connected. We're here, and uh, I'm a third line, so I'm I'm totally okay with all the randomness. So uh, thanks for sticking with us, and um, thanks for uh, yeah, you know, it's it's sometimes it's it's a, it's, it's always uh, it's like a new thing, right? Do, doing yeah, this kind of brand new, all of it, this all of it. Uh, connecting all around the world like this. So I'm going to just now share your pull up your your chart, so we can have a little look at your chart, and. Uh, of course, it's hiding now. <laughs> Tom, where have you gone? <laughs> bear with me, bear with me. So, so what I'd love is for you to, um, what, what is it about your chart that you'd like to share? Is there anything in your chart that, that uh, you could tell us about to start with? Um, sure, sure. So I guess, you know, the reason we're here is I, I was, I was sure I was asking a question about something and I posted my chart and you were like, wow, look at that. And it was like a new, wow, look at that. But I've had a number of those sort of encounters and then I don't really get to know what that is, <laughs> what that is, you know, <laughs> like, the, and then what you said that I recall was what you noted were like you just repeated on their intro the, the 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 low number or the few uh hanging gates and the other thing you said was all of those come all of the gates coming out of the ajna which i had never thought about before but all of a sudden seems really meaningful because that's like half my hanging gates are hanging out of my head or my ajna, you know, which is defined. And so that, so like, what am I wondering about these days? I'm wondering about those, those two things, like all the openness and the ajna. And then where we started off talking, uh, 
uh, uh, you know, for this, you said, do you realize that the right angle cross of service is like necessarily with the uh, channel of judgment? And I was like, well, no, but it makes sense. But no, I'm curious why you asked that. Because I didn't, I didn't get why you, why you asked mm. if I knew that it was if, like if that was a rare thing. Mm. Or just, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and I really don't. Yeah, yeah. Just we got some fun. juicy. We got some juicy things here to to pick up on, and uh, you know, I guess uh, one one of the things I, just to frame this, you know, like it's really cool because human design is such a deep and intricate thing, and um, you, you know, there's there's huge areas of human design that that I know very little about. I sort of know most of what's what, but it, 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 it's so. Bearing in mind, you know, you're, if you're a year into your journey, um, there's already going to be lots of things that you now do get that you, that you, you know, you know which center is which, you know a little bit about some of your, your channels, your gates. And so, um, you know, if we start with some of the things that uh, you are sort of aware of and that you know about, and then we can start to dig into some of the other things. And it'd be just be really cool as well to to hear a bit more about you know when you first found out you were a, a projector and uh yeah and 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 stuff like that so in the meantime andrea just posted a comment and so so the two things you mentioned um should we talk about the thing with your ajna to start with because i've got that on the screen there i think everyone can see that right yeah that's great i mean i know nothing that's great well Sometimes people, I think, underestimate what they already do know. So, you know, let's right. start at the real beginning. So the Ajna is this green one, and you know that, right? So yeah. here's the Ajna Center. And uh, bear in mind, we've got people who are brand new to the experiment. So um, right. this is one of the nine centers, and it's a, it's a green triangle. Um, now, any of the green triangles, that, any, any of the triangles that point towards the center, there's three of them. Uh, there's this one, and then there's the spleen on the left pointing in and the emotional solar plexus on the right pointing in, and they are the sensing centers. So you also have the, the spleen, um, and they sense different things. So the Arjuna is all about questions, and we can see it's got six gates, right? So there's yep. three gates across the top pointing at the head, and there's three gates at the bottom pointing at the throat. And out of those, you have five out of six of those gates defined in either red or black or both. So I like to just start with the sort of a logical, uh, the, the sort of simplest information. Then we can sort of dig into what that means um, a bit later. So that's, that's some, one thing we can explore. Um, right and then your Ajna is connected to your throat by the channel, the 1156. So that's one of your... You have two channels, don't you? That's one of your. Oh, sorry, you've got three channels. Got three, so that yeah. One, yeah, that's yeah. One way, yeah. It's that one up there. And then um, we're now looking down at the, the the lower part. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that Thomas has has got what we call split definition. So what that means is that your ajna and your throat are connected. And then you've got connection from your spleen down to your root with two channels. But those, those different centers are not connected. So the, 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 the top two centers do not connect to the bottom two centers. Um, and so if we, if we look at what would it take to connect your spleen to your throat, I think we were talking a little bit about this, weren't we, about the bridge gate? I think you have my bridge gate, 16. Um, I think you said that. That's I think I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've got gate 16. And actually, for me, gate 48 is my, my bridge gate. So we, uh, between us, we, you, know, you, you bridge my split definition and I bridge your split definition. So split definition, we can talk about uh, split definition a little. Uh, anyone who's split definition, it's actually the most common of all of the different definitions. I think it's about 46% of people have this split definition. Single, single definition is, is like more um, self-sufficient, like there's a sort of a wholeness that comes with being a single definition. 
So for example, Andrea has this channel, this 1858 channel, and she, she's watching here as well. And she has that channel. That's the channel of judgment, the 1858. And that is her one and only channel. So she's single definition. Whereas you and I have this split definition and split definition. We're here to experience relationship. We're here to sort of, there's like a, a kind of a craving or a desire or a need to bridge that split. So when we, when we, when we have that split bridge, there's a feeling of wholeness. It's like, ah, now I, now the two parts of me are lined up. Um, so Thomas, I don't know. Do you, do you have a felt sense of this split definition thing? Does this feel like sometimes there's two parts of you going in different directions? Um, well, yeah, yeah, definitely. And in, in a lot of different ways, <laughs> but, but in, in the way that I was first introduced to the split, if I recall correctly, mm. it was sort of a, like a completion thing, kind, kind of like you said, where, you know, I'm not, I, I deal better in relationship. I, I, I kind of mm. need a partner. I, I get mm. that. And mm. something's not on, not on or a little off when I'm not. And mm. what also came up in that same conversation was that, I don't know, probably there were other aspects of my chart, but it was uh, phrased as like longing, like really deep sense of longing as part of my core. And that resonates, you know, so mm. I haven't, you know, I haven't had a lot of experience or understanding of when, when channels, you know, when, uh, you know, things are bridged or channels are filled. I did feel this most recent transit, which was interesting, whatever that the six and 50 something that just happened, the sexuality energy, that, that kind of thing. I'm trying to get more. Ah, oh, the 659. That. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yes, I, I yeah. experienced that. It was the first time it was like, oh, I get it. Uh, but I haven't yet, e even though I think there are some of those people in my life, it hasn't been like, a, and I think this, okay, it, it hasn't been like two, two parts of a jigsaw puzzle coming together or two halves becoming one, that kind of a, you know, a, a way. It's, I, I either haven't understood it or it hasn't been that cut and dry. Does that make sense? Like, Absolutely. Really and and, and this, is, this is this is beautiful. This is this yeah. is beautiful. It's really cool because you know what you're ex describing, you know, you're you're less than a year into your experiment, right? So it yeah. makes perfect sense to me because on the one hand, we have this very, very clear, very logical thing of saying, right, this is what you experience, but then we experience so much because, you know, as you mentioned there's current transits going on as well. Um, how do you track those? Do you have an app for them or do you, do you look at them on a website? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I went into this, frankly, I went into this, like as soon as I opened the door and the, you know, the hurricane came through, then I was, I was, on, I was wary that I didn't want to spend too much money. And I was, I, I was cautioned. I was a little bit conservative going in as far as like, I'm going to go into this and learn as much as I learn and spend as little as I need. And so I, I got a free app called the human design app. And, mm. uh, and then uh, I believe, and then I got some sort of upgrade or up whatever that was like $5. It was like five to $6. And that, uh -huh. that's how I know the transits. So, Really, I heard about the transits online in the mm. groups of people going, holy moly. And then they're like, you pour sixes because I've got the six. And, then, and people were like, oh, you pour sixes out there, man, you got to come in. And what I was experiencing was all day yesterday and the day before, a lot of nervous energy. It wasn't like, it didn't, there was no sexual, you know, as far as I was saying, it was just more energy than normal more nervous energy than normal and when people were talking about this it it made like perfect it was palpable i mean it made perfect sense uh so that's so i, yeah, I just i really just cool. pulled an image up on the screen here is this the app that you're talking about this yeah. one here yeah, yeah. so I, I use this one as well and uh it's 
it, it doesn't say anything about the incarnation cross, but apart from that, it has very much everything I think you need to know at a beginner level, right? And it yeah. also has this optional extra feature. I think it's like a one-time payment of $5. And there's yeah. one way you can, so you can track the current transit as it is, but when you pay the extra money, it allows you to overlay the current transit on top of your chart so you can see um, how the two things fit together. And you can see how that's changing over time. So it's a little bit like I've heard it described as the weather forecast, this current transit. It's like, you know, at the time you're born, that's when you're conscious, um, you know, when your, your personality is formed. And then the design is formed at another point in time, 88 days before. So the 88 days before is the red and at the time of your birth is the black. So black is uh, personality, it's, it's conscious, and red is design and it's unconscious. And so then those, um, those 13 gate activations in black and 13 gate activations in red then go onto the body graph and where two gates line up with each other. So, uh, for example, we've talked about the 1858 at the bottom left of your chart. So one of those is conscious, one's unconscious, and those two come together. And that, that makes a channel. And that then activates both of the spleen and the root there. Um, so, so you have three of those channels where those gates line up with each other. And... Um, yeah, so so tracking the the, the current um, the current transit can be very interesting. Um, of course, that's that's a more that's 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 definitely an intermediate uh, human design thing, right? So if you're a beginner watching this, don't worry too much about the current transits. If you're a beginner watching this, really, you know, it's it's about strategy and authority, and that's what I'd like to jump in with you, uh, Thomas. If if yeah. if you're up for it, like, Absolutely. how was that? First of all, finding out, hey. By the way, you're a projector and your strategy is to wait for the invitation. Do you remember the moment when that first happened and how it was? I don't know if I remember the precise moment, but that moment in time of my life was a huge relief and affirmation and validation and confirmation and permission for all of this stuff that I had either known, been clear about, didn't worry about, known, been clear about, worried about, you know, uh, the whole gamut. And it explained mm. so much. So mm. it was so, in, it was so like instructive in that way. And then, or yeah. And, and it, it was also like instructive going forward. Like, okay, I already know that works. It gel, it, it, everything jibes with this. And Therefore, that seems like a good strategy to go to go forward. Uh, so for one, I love the fact that it it seems to not contradict all these other modalities that I sort of uh, like ascribe to. Uh, that's an issue for me sometimes when things aren't mutually consistent kind of thing. Not that right. Everything about it just confirms everything everything else it's just amazing do you the have end? an example of something from your life because because i think you know sure. i think this can be super useful for people like was there was there sure. a scenario or something you look back on and you're like aha <laughs> okay, i'm a projector sure. of course yeah i'll give you a, i'll probably give you a bunch so great one, this is juicy know, i i quit that job after 20 years not having any what well, really having no plan. Like if I was yeah. planning to have a plan, didn't have a plan. I was in this <laughs> really, uh, a really deep, reflective, really deep spiritual part of my life with a woman at the, at the school who left two years before me, probably when I needed to leave. Like, I think that that was my invitation to leave was hmm. two years earlier than I actually left. And I mm -hmm. kind of hung on just out of the, like, just, you know, it's comfortable. It was really comfortable. That's the roof aspect too of the sick, whatever, but there, there was a, a comfort to that. And then I was really, let's just call it intuition. I was really tapping into my intuition. I was getting out of my 
mind and more into feeling. And this was a big part of it. Like it was a knowing that I needed to leave. I felt like I, if you've ever seen Mad Men, the series, like I was just diving off of a, you know, out of a window with no, no net, uh, a sense of trust and it'll work out. And well, one of the things that they didn't like to hear about my profile was, you know, I'm a four six and they say that fours are always supposed to have a job set up before you leave it. And uh, that, that's how I think the whole world, my whole world, is. it's like, it's, it, it, it's like heresy to quit a job. For me, the way I was raised, you just don't do that. So it was a crazy point in my life as far as like taking a risk and floating out some, some faith and trust. And, and then four months later, I hear, well, you're not supposed to work. Now's about time for a change. <laughs> Everything just lined up. It was just, un I was like, I love my spleen. I fell in love with my authority, the waiting. I've been, I've been waiting, Dunstan. I've been doing nothing for over a year. Mm. And just not loving it, loving the fact that I've done it. Like, this is my Mount Everest in a way. Like, I've... I've managed to not distract myself from the moment I wake up until the, well, I do, yeah, still. But I mean, <laughs> but I mean like, I, I was like, I think that you, you know, I think we were a bit, we were both into triathlon and, you know, that's, that, that says a lot. It's a big part of your life where six hours a day you're training and, you know, it's just, you know, I was really intense for, for my whole life. And in a big way, I feel like, okay, so did, so projector is the biggest, you know, and I'm, I, I, I tend to, yeah. So the so more projector stuff, like I've been exhausted and all the sicknesses that's, that have happened. So I had heart, open heart surgery at age 35 while I was training for a marathon. My heart swelled twice the size because it was compensating. <laughs> I had to get emergency surgery, healed really quickly, went out, blew out the other ACL, First time I, I, I do anything, I go back to playing soccer, which I hadn't done since I was 16. I had blown out both my knees by now. And then I hit 40 and suddenly I can't walk a block without getting, you know, breathed. And I'm supposedly an endurance athlete. And turns out I have leukemia that's going to kill me. So I had to get a bone marrow transplant. And bone marrow transplant was a big, big instance of, grace really like the that trust i think part of the trust of, of leaving this job was the same spirit of like like you know when you're i had a five percent i had five to fifteen percent chance of living i everybody was saying goodbye to me my boss threw out all my stuff but no one thought i was going to live so that was really weird uh but it it, it was also the most was like a peak experience because i you know, I, I was able to, there was, it was like gratitude without an object, like objectless gratitude, a really cool space. So I think that may have helped me in this transition now where, you know, I'm not depressed. I have bipolar disorder or was diagnosed as that. And you would think that me being alone for a year with nothing to do, I would be really depressed and I'm not things have been strangely wonderful and uneventful and really busy all at the same time so you 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 really you're describing you know this this waiting what you're you, you know it, it's it's you're the, probably the first person I've ever spoken to who's really enjoyed the waiting so much <laughs> you, you, it sounds like you've been doing a really good job of that waiting for this I'm last year it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so this might be a good time to because uh, one of the things that that's quite interesting about your chart is you obviously have you know if we zoom out here we can everybody watching this will be able to see we've got you've got four centers colored in or defined and then five centers that are undefined right yep. so the five white centers now of those five white centers you have three that are totally open and this is very unusual i've not i've not seen this 
in very many charts at all. So what do we mean by totally open? Well, obviously, if we look at the head center there, the 61, the 63, and the 64 have no gates activated. So there's no energy whatsoever in your head center. Then we come down here and we look at your will center. Of those four gates on the will, not a single one of those has any activation. Now, not only that, but there's not even a gate pointing at the will that has any activation. So potentially there's four channels pointing at the will and not a single one of those. Like, you know, if we look here and if I put it in the middle of the screen, you know, we've got the 2551 going up to the G center and you don't have the 25 gate activation. Of course, you don't have the 51 either. If we look right. then at the 4521, that's a manifested channel and you have, you have neither end of that channel. Again, we look at the 4037, which is the, the channel of family with the keynote of the deal. Uh, again, you have, you have neither gate of that. And then finally looking across at the 2644, which is, um, this is the channel of sales. I, I have that one defined, but again, you have neither the 26 nor the 44. So, you don't have the first thing is you do not have the, the will center, which is also called the ego or the heart. You do not have that center defined. Second, even more so, it's completely open because you have not a single gate activation. And even more than that, you don't even have a, a gate pointing at it. So the only way that you can have the will defined is if, 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 if the whole channel comes along, if you're in relationship with someone or in the current transit or you're in a cafe with someone that has the whole channel. Now, one of the very interesting things about the open will center, the open heart or ego, is that it's an indicator for putting pressure on the heart. Now, it's very interesting that, that you know, you're an energy projector, same as me because you have those two motors. We both have the same, um, well, you, sorry, you have one motor, don't you? You have the root. Root, yeah. Right, so, you know, in triathlon, um, you know, for an energy projector, which is a projector that has one of those motors, or at least one of those motors, um, you know, it's, it's good for us to burn off our energy. However, with the open will, the not-self question is, where am I acting like I have something to prove? And where am I being competitive when it's not appropriate for me to be competitive? So we look at, we look at your chart and when it's totally open, it's like even more so. It's like you may not even be aware that you're being competitive in a way that's not healthy and appropriate for you and not correct for you. Um, so does that res? I mean, because because Ra specifically talked about heart um, heart issues as as being a thing, and you know you you've shared about having you know heart surgery. This is mm -hmm. and and I know Andrea's watching, and she's got the open ego, heart, will, and head as well. So what uh, does that resonate as 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 kind of did you, did you get any indication of what was the cause of of the the, the thing with your heart? Uh, yeah. Uh, but first of all, I'm just sort of letting this digest. That 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 was new information for me. That was really cool. Thank you. Uh, just now, and, yeah. Yeah, just now, like all the the openness toward the heart, mm. and then mm. and then there being some connection to the physical heart. So what happened with me was I had so I had what's called a a, conge a congenital heart valve defect, right? So my my aortic valve might be you know the aorta, the big one. Uh, it was bicuspid, so two uh, cutting. There's two valves instead of three. It's supposed to be like a peace sign, right? So I was okay. born basically with a deformed valve, and usually these things either don't show up or show up when you're older. And mine uh -huh. basically blew out during training, and then the heart doubled in size to compensate for all the blood that kept coming back down. It made a bigger pump. And it was wow. my liver. So I had wow. cramps. I never had cramps before. And I was like, uh. Doc. And he, <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> he like jumped back, like, what's wrong with your heart? I'm like, I don't know. You tell me. And, and that's what happened. And they were like, get, uh, get in the ambulance. And, and so, yeah. So my heart had swelled and, and 
So that's what happened there. And then more hard stuff. So, okay. So then I had a special type of surgery, right? Usually you'd get either a mechanical valve or uh, usually a porcine or a, por or a pig or maybe cow. And the, the animals not, are not guaranteed to last your lifetime. You might have to get a two or three more, right? One or two more, something like that. And, and you were in your valve, 20s, right? When this was happening, was you were like... like I was 35. I was okay, 35. okay. Yeah, and thank you. 35, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for asking. So then, so, and the mechanical, maybe I was even younger, shit, I don't know. Okay, but I know I was still <laughs> doing triathlon. This uh -huh. One of my questions, the guy, with, you know, in the, in the fancy hospital with the big oak desk and all this, but, you know, I hate to be special. I'm not fed up. Anyway, so he was like, you want to do A or B? And I was like, that's it? And, and I and I said, well, what about triathlon? He said, well, you have to wear a helmet. I'm like, we already wear helmets. He's like, no, in the water. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I was already, I didn't want to get the mechanical because of the, uh, I'd have to be on a blood thinner. It would be re restrictive. I was already on medication. I didn't want to be. So I found this doctor who only did this, this surgery on kids. And he did, this doctor did it more than anyone on earth. I was in super shape. He was like, no problem. He, so he did me. And as a function of this surgery, most people are, I think a third said the nurses, come out in AFib. So atrial fibrillation is when the top two chambers of your heart are out of whack. V-fib is what you hear, see in the hospital, we need the paddles. Like, I don't need paddles, but I do need my rhythm back, right? And that's been, that has per perked up recently so that's a big part of my life now why i applied for disability along with mm. another this is crazy like and i wonder mm. how much of this is just residual from being a super slave or my energy but i got this crazy other <sighs> condition illness called dupatrin's disease where some people may have heard of this or hopefully more and more your hands start to, they come, they call it Viking uh, hands. And it's a collagen condition where things get worse. Anyway, in treating, in trying to treat the, this collagen thing that, that affects my hands and feet and such, that would affect my heart valve. So and then I've been an AFib, but now I may have to have another type of, uh, cauterization kind of procedure for my heart coming up so that's where i am now and everything's coming together and it's really interesting that's probably it will be really great if um i i'm one of the things that i want to do is to start to index some of these resources more uh comprehensively because i i i think it would be really juicy and and uh, powerful specifically for you to read directly the words that Ra said about this thing with the open heart um, okay. and, to, and to check that out. So sure. um, I know there are people, um, we could maybe search in the, in, in the groups and find that information. Um, but I, I, I'd love you to, I'd love to hear from you, you know, when you've had a chance to digest that information. Um, you know, what I've given you is the sort of the facts of it, the, the fact mm -hmm. of having it totally open and having not even any gate pointing at it. So, mm -hmm. Um, it'd be great to sort of see what, what lands with you once you've had a chance to access that other information. Um, so it definitely feels like there's something worth, you know, cause in an experiment, it's like, how do you match up? You know, here's some theory and here's your experience. So how do those things match up? Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I have a defined will center, you know, 70% of people have it undefined. Um, so, you know, for me, I can, I can reliably make promises according to human design. And I can also, um, you know, it's, it's like I'm, I'm naturally can sort of, um, that competitive willpower element is not unhealthy for me according to human design. Um, right. whereas for you, I would, m m my sense of it would be, you know, if you, if you, if, if there was a, a 12 year old version of you and that you know someone with some wisdom and some access to human design you know ra said human design is for the kids so you know if you were to c come across a 12 year old with the same uh chart as you 
then we could be saying, you know, you could be saying, well, hey, look out for trying to be competitive when it's not necessary or appropriate for you. To, you know, trying to act like you've got something to prove is one of the, the keynotes for the open. Uh, Say the that open again. Try, try, try so not it's, to it's, act like, like you've got Yeah, to it's prove. like the question is, where am I acting like I have something to prove? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, Andrea. I, Andrea, let me know if the word's slightly different to that. That's ninety percent what it says. Where am I? Am I? Am I acting like I have something to prove? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's that's cool. Cool. So I and fine without the mic up there. Like I just missed the word. That thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. So Andrea and you have some similarities in your chart. So Andrea has the totally open head, the totally open um, will center. Now, sometimes people get confused because it's got three names. Now, the will, the ego, or the heart. Let's just go back to it on your chart, um, just so that we can be totally clear. This is one thing that confused me for my first year um, because I, I didn't realize it was the same center. So here it is. It's got four gates. It's the 21, the 51, the 26 and the 40. And if you, if someone has it defined, then it's colored in red. And if someone has it undefined, then it's colored in white like that. So this is the will, the ego or the heart. And it's, um, it's the heart in the physical sense. So, um, yeah, so, so, so that's it. Um, now Andrew's just made a, an interesting, an interesting comment here that you have two out of the three channels, which go from the spleen to the root and those, um, yeah, the, the, the thing about being an energy, um, an energy projector is that that energy from the root needs to be discharged through exercise, but it's all about the intention. It's kind of like if the intention is to do exercise because it feels good to discharge that energy, then that's very healthy. Whereas if it's like, you know, trying to win your age group or beat your personal best, then with the open will center, this is where the not self mind is coming in um, and trying to, you know, push yourself beyond what's healthy for you. Um, so I don't know if in retrospect that, that makes sense. Um, sure. Yeah. So it's the competitive aspect that can be unhealthy. Yeah. Um, I, I Andrea, think I thanks. Was, I think I, you know, in, in thinking about, you know, I about com competitiveness. I mean, one, and always tell me when to stop because you know how we sometimes go. <laughs> so, it's all good. So, one, my will as a kid was known to be iron, like ironclad, and I, I'm, I think you're shedding a little more light on my my upbringing here, my family dynamics, because my mother, my father was, uh, he, he was very, like she liked his pain tolerance. You know, she, she admired similar things that we had. And I grew up Catholic and we had Lent. And I was the kid who would eat like six or seven bagels at a time. You know, I would just, I, I was, I was a gorger or whatever. And, and I was a sugar, you know, sugar, all this. I had a big appetite, a lot of things. And when Lent came, like, I would give up my dog. I, it, I, I would give up any, my, the, my favorite thing. And those people who, like, you know, could do, could take a break on Sunday or whatever, it was like, no, you don't even know. It was like all or nothing. So I had a really strong will there. But now I'm wondering if I was, so heavily conditioned by that like mother by the you know conditioned at an early age so that when i was a young adult i remember mountain biking with my brother and we were in some place that he knew the trails and they were pretty technical and there was one i was really good at the uphills just out of pure will whatever. the fitness and the aerobic <laughs> capacity yeah yeah, yeah I have huge, right yeah and <laughs> But there was this one line that I couldn't make all the way to the top. You know, it was coming to like <laughs> vertical. And I would just go, oh, I would just walk down and do it again. And walk down and do it again. And, walk. and he was like, you are crazy. And he's like, you're the, and he said to me, you're the most competitive person. Something about like, you're the most competitive with yourself 
than I've ever seen anybody ever. And that, that was distinctive with me because I didn't necessarily get into rivalries or whatever, but like I had to be, if I did a hundred pushups today, I got to do a hundred pushups tomorrow at least. You know what I mean? There's no yep. room for, for a break. So yeah, kind of extraordinary. I got something about that. Is I'm going to look into that. That's pretty interesting. This is this is a this is a very very juicy topic because it's like, how do you know? Like if if the con if the conditioning is there so early, like it's hard to tell what's conditioning and what's mm. what's really you. You know. So this is this is your your experiment. Um, but, 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 but totally like, like, you know, like Andrea is saying on the comments here, it's like this, maybe this is what caused your, your heart to, you know, imagine, let's just, let's just say, what if you were conditioned so early because, you know, what you're saying about the Catholic thing is yeah. it's all about denying yourself pleasure. It's all about overriding your, right. um, overriding yourself. Right. Yeah. And so, so the two influences, you've got that, you know, de denying yourself pleasure or the, you know, they have that self-flagellation thing where they cause themselves right. pain and it's, it's virtuous to, to put yourself in discomfort. And then you've also got this thing where you see this, the feminine archetype in your life, your mother and your father, where your, your mother re respects your father because of his capacity for, for, for his willpower. Now, the interesting thing with the totally open centers, I don't have totally open centers, but what I've heard described with the totally open centers is it's almost like you don't, it, it's so open, you don't even realize that it's open. So it's like, it's like you, you don't. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this would, you know, like Andrea's pointing out, this could be the thing where you as a little young Tom from before he can remember has had this energetic imprint of, you know, a man who's in his willpower is, it's, 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 it gets affirmed. So you're affirmed for being in your willpower and you're also affirmed for, for being very stoic and not admit, not, not letting on if it hurts or, or if it's, so, you know, you, you're learning very year, uh, early to suppress your body's warning messages so strongly that you don't even acknowledge that they're there. Um, that you know could this possibly lead to you know in your 30s or whenever it was that your heart is has has, has been taking all this pressure so much that 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 you know the heart has some kind of you know can't can't take that pressure anymore um so this is something to uh to look into right to to yeah. to, to investigate and see what's true for you um but uh yeah. So, so, and Andrea's got, let's see what else Andrea's saying. This is, this is great. Um, that self, yeah. And, 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 and from what you're saying, it's com com competitive with yourself, right? It's like, and this is the thing, isn't it? With triathlon, it's not so much, it's not like when you're fighting someone or going head to head with, with someone, it's more about you competing against yourself. Um, sure. rather than it being a playful kind of, Oh, let's, you know, it, it's like that, that, I got to prove this to myself that I can do this, that kind of like pushing yourself. Um, so, uh, so, so yeah, let's, <laughs> um, we might get into the, um, the, the uh, Andrea is asking about the, the variables and, and your motivation and stuff like that. We might go into that a little bit later. Let's, um, let's see what else there is on your chart to, uh, to, to look at, because the other thing that you have on your chart is let's go back into it here is you you have the totally open like we've talked about the will center but here we've also got the totally open sacral center right mm -hmm. so the not self theme of the sacral center this this is the one that the generators have and the open sacral the not self theme is how do i know when enough is enough so, uh, you know, here we have, how do I know when enough is enough and where am I acting like I have something to prove? So, you know, put these two together and that's like double whammy of overexerting yourself, overstretching yourself, um, you know, particularly in, 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 in having, using your energy and, and in, in, in pushing yourself and your heart. So did you, you were saying about getting exhausted. Was that something that, that uh, you'd noticed before human design, right? 
Uh, I've noticed it over the like since since I took off from since I left work and maybe earlier. Uh -huh. I was feeling more fatigued more more often, and kind of uh, finding reasons for it, so not worrying about it. So it it was kind of like sliding into permission to rest and to nap, and then like really slippery slope into you know this this summer at some points i was i was sleeping with the afib what happens and i'm learning more and more about this it's getting it's getting more interesting so when i'm in it full i can't really do anything like i can't really walk up and down or i can't go to the subway i'm kind of kind of housebound uh and then the medication i take makes you tired those are beta blockers supplementary medication makes you tired too and then the afib itself makes you tired so that even the, like for the next day if you're not in it i'm like recovering from a day of having been in it so it's kind of ridiculous recently i've never been this i've never been this uh, sedentary in my life like ever and it's also nice to kind of have an excuse to do nothing, you know, where I'm already struggling with the whole doing nothing, you know, the whole projector waiting thing. For me, it's been a lot easier from what we've already said. And mm. from sometimes there's no choice. Like I call mm. these disability people, I have, a, I have a hearing coming up and I'm supposed to go to a place. And if I don't go there, you know, I lose everything or something. And I'm like, what, what if that day I, I can't go, you know, like I'm too sick to get this ability. And so it's, that's kind of <laughs> yeah, where I'm right. That's, that's kind tough. It's kind of where I'm right now. You know? Right. And then also long term effects of the bone marrow transplant. The three big things they said were, were uh, chemo brain, which I definitely have. You haven't seen much of it now, but it's a lot of what was I saying or losing a word, kind of a short term memory thing. And then fatigue was was a long term bone marrow thing, and then you know like I'm sterile, sexual dysfunction, you know that kind of a thing. And I didn't really notice the fatigue until I'm wondering too if that and then age it's all rolling into one. So I don't know how much to attribute how much of this fatigue. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't know what what where it's coming from or if it's a Thomas, I just wanted to I just want to thank you for sharing so candidly because you know there's there's a lot of big stuff here that you're sharing and I sure. you know I, I I really just appreciate your just as, from one human like regardless of human design just from one human being to another I just you know it's some it's some some big big stuff that you've you've been <laughs> working through you know so sure. thank you for for just being so straight up with it and um you're welcome and and, and sharing that um and uh, I mean, I, I, I can empathize with some of this triathlon thing because, you know, I, I got to a stage in my triathlon where, you know, I, I qualified for Kona for the Ironman. And then I was just like, I had no energy. And I had this weird bipolar kind of cycle where one week I was training the house down. Now I've got a defined will, you know. So I was like one week I was on fire. And then the next week it was like, it was like um, all my get up and go had just got up and went. You know, it's like my serotonin was like, I just had no energy. And, you know, the, 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 the more I enjoyed those highs, that was like, then my body was like, going, nah, this week you've got no energy. Fuck off. You're doing nothing. You know? <laughs> it was like my higher self was going, right, just stop. Um, obviously a very different circumstance to what you're facing with the medical stuff. But I, I kind of feel a resonance with that thing of you just saying you, 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 you somehow ended up in a place where you had no choice. You couldn't push yourself anymore. You, 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 you just can't keep on going. You know, it's like, nah, stop. Like the switch has been turned off. Um, yeah. and, and that's, um, you know, it's something I know a lot of projectors resonate with that, that theme with no, no defined sacral. Hey, no life force energy. Well, you know, related to that, you know, what you from what I just said before, and, and so another thing that I that I wasn't so much relieved, but it was like, okay, another big that makes sense is, as a kid, I never had any 
de designs on a family or fatherhood. As I grew up, same thing. When I had girlfriends who wanted to, I was all in, but not, but now I'm understanding more and more why that might be, right? Uh, and then when the when the leukemia happens and only like, I don't know, six months into recovery was I like, whoa, wait a minute. Weren't you supposed to give me an option to bank, you know, before, because they told yeah, me. Yeah, right. Right? And I was like, what's up with that? And I'm like, not, you know, not for, not, but actually I think my mind started going toward because my bills were huge. And I started thinking, you know, uh, I just started thinking about litigation kind of stuff, like that kind of thing. And they, I was like, listen, what, what's up with that? And the nurse, we, they're all, I went to, I was at Memorial Sloan Kettering. And that, they're the best hospital just by the by. I mean, app, just so wonderful. So they sat me down and they were like, listen, this is what happens. And normally we do ABC, XYZ as part of the procedure. So, but, you know, you, you may not understand this isn't a one shot deal, so to speak. You know, you need to take a number of days and do this. And, you know, here I am thinking that you can't, all right, I'm getting, I'm getting into this. But my point is, I'm like, basically don't want kids, turn out sterile. And then it turns out I'm not supposed to be a breeder anyway. Well, that makes sense. With being a projector, right? Like yeah, that thing, right. yeah. I'm, I'm right. And I've always been a teacher and I've always thought of like, if you've ever heard of where the, I, you know, where meme, the word really came from, it was like, it came from Gene, from uh, Richard Dawkins, the selfish Gene. He talked about a meme as a cultural unit that gets spread like a gene gets spread. And my theory about, you know, singles for for a long time, female, but now male school teachers is if you're not procreating, you are spreading yourself in another way. So I've always sort of comforted myself and I've loved helping kids, but not having any of my own isn't an issue. That being said, I feel really bad for people who are projectors who find out, you know, you know what I mean? Like, if, if you want to have kids and you find it you're not supposed to, that's got to be a little weird. I, I just, I got lucky there. Like, it all, again, it just dovetailed. There's no contradiction, you know? I can't, it's, it's, it's really just another validation. Like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that thing of like, okay, well, maybe I don't, I don't yeah. Like, I mean, I, I resonate with you on that. But I also feel like, you know, I lo know a lot of projectors or parents and are very happy with it as well. And um, yeah, but I, and I don't see any. I, yeah, I don't see a downside to the having. I just I feel like it's kind of for like you. Mr. It's bringing Nazi. peace, isn't it? It's yeah, it's, it's like, like permission not to, as opposed to you're not to, like a prohibition. You know what I mean? Yep, 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 mm. yep. So let's uh, let's have a little look at. Um, so your incarnation cross, your your uh, incarnation cross. You're on the fifty eight sun gate, fifty eight fifty two. So I'm going to go and look up. Um, now, just for, for anyone watching this, just bear in mind, this site that I'm going to use, it's not the official site. The, the best way to get the official information is to go if you've got the book of human design. But I, I like this for a, a quick reference. Um, and this has, got, this has got a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of juice in it here. So is that, that's coming up there. We can zoom in on that in a second. So it just, it just sort of gives us an indication now, um, but this is interesting. You've got 1817. Oh, is it a right angle cross? Yeah, it's right angle of service. Got it, because it's a 4-6, but that's a right angle cross. Yes, thank you. So it's the right angle cross of service, and it's got the four. Let's just go on to it again. Here it is, the right angle cross of service. Let's put it up at the top there. And it's got the 58, the 52, the 18 and the 17. Now, each of the right angle crosses has four different versions depending on where your sun gate is, right? So your sun gate is on the 58. So what this is talking about, the right angle cross of service, the cross you bring is an interesting blend of the love of beauty and life and the energy to connect the logical process. This correction is an important process in our world because it helps change patterns for the better and move us forward to make progress. The finding beauty aspect in life 
may make some people envious as they want to access to that energy to utilize it for more practical correction. Your drive is to use the energy for less practical matters and more aesthetic or spiritual things. So the four gates in your incarnation cross are the 58, the 50, which is aliveness, the 52, which is inaction, the 18, which is correction, and the 17, which is opinions. So if we go back to your body graph and we have a look, we can see where each of those gates are. So let's zoom out a little here. And first of all, the thing that I noticed looking at this was I'm like, hang on a minute. Look, you've got the 18 and the 58, which are in your incarnation cross. But those two gates form the 1858, which is the channel of judgment. So that's really interesting. So this, this because it means that anybody that has the, uh, the right angle cross of service automatically has the channel of judgment. And that doesn't go for other crosses? Like they wouldn't automatically have a channel? I like, like are they assigned, you know, like that or I'm just wondering. It, yes. Well, here's an example. For example, my right angle cross is the right angle cross of explanation. Now that always contains the 2343, which is the okay. freaked genius. Okay. So so and that's because those two are formed in opposition. Okay. Also, if anybody has the the right angle cross of the sleeping phoenix. That contains the 2034, which is the pure manifesting generator channel, which is also formed in opposition. So there are certain incarnation crosses that contain within them specific channels. Okay, gotcha. Right. Got so, gotcha. so for you, this, um, this gate 58 is a key gate for you because it's your sun gate. Okay. So it's the gate of aliveness and it's that gate which is contained uh, within that channel for the 1858. Now, the channel of judgment is in the collective circuitry. Right. And what that means is that it's the, it's the discernment to judge what is correct for us as a group of people, for us as a community, as a society to be using. It's not intended to judge yourself or to judge your friends your family your lovers your colleagues it's not designed to judge you know and if it's used wrongly it can be very harsh now i'm wondering if what you've said about your catholic upbringing that you may have turned this channel of judgment on yourself and been very judgment judging of you um which is not how this channel's meant to be used it's not it's not meant to be used to to beat yourself with um if that makes any sense yeah, it makes total sense. It's kind of it's kind of cool because I was just talking online with someone from these groups yesterday who yep. also has the 1858. They were yep. asking if uh, if I felt if I felt judged much, and it seemed like we were coming from truth. I thought we were on the same page, but I don't think we were. She she was talking about feeling judged. I was. I automatically went to judging myself and feeling as if other people are judging, even though my, my, you know, reality tells me it's probably not true. There's a lot of just anxious, you know, neurotic shit going on there, you know? So yeah, there's a lot of judgment in my life and there's the correctness that comes up. And I've been able to, in the same conversation, like I think in teaching, like in teaching kids, in teaching yoga, that let's say predisposition to correct, I mm. think I've I've worked with it pretty well. Whereas I could be pretty harsh. Like there's a lot of, you know, if you look at my, I don't know much about astrology, but I'm a, I'm a Capricorn and Scorpio. Is it? There's a lot of, I wouldn't want to be my student sometimes, right? If I was, if I was not like you know, aligned kind of thing. Cause I can be. So are you really saying that you can judgy. be a bit, you can be a bit harsh yeah. on individuals yes. with that panel of judgment yes, there? I can. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. that's, just yeah. a, that's a matter of me just not having my shit together. Like I need to, I need to center 
you know, I, I can do that. And also, I know that this is a this feel sensitive stuff. I don't mind talking about this stuff at all. But but with the bipolar stuff, depression is one thing that goes very deep. But with the with the mania, with the high part of it, it comes out. It's it's kind of like a part of the. It's kind of like a, a what is it, Mr. Hyde kind of thing, like the other the other like my judgment comes out in full force, full force mm. with like extra fuel. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. if, I'm, if my if my back is up against the wall, you mm-hmm. know, you're not going to have a throat. You know, I'll rip it out from here. You know, mm. like it's, it's, it's all verbal. It's it's really mm-hmm. interesting how how it does un- unleash there. Mm-hmm. The inner critic was vicious at, for a long time. And I think, I don't know if I, I, well, I recently wrote somewhere that mantra has helped me a lot with that, with the, se- with the internal self-dialogue, negative, negative self-talk. The uh, you know, repeating a phrase in my head has precluded, has, that's been one of the biggest helps of yoga for me, has been mentally, has been to, to have something that I can just say silently all day long if I, if I want and keeps me out of my head, you know. Thanks for sharing about that, because that's a that's sure. a side of you. You know, it's it's cool to kind of get a full sense of you. You know, this this other this other side of you, which you know, from what you're saying, can be quite judgy. You can, sure, you can come yeah. out a bit judgmental, yeah. and um, you know, so there's a few things, right? So, like we said, this channel of judgment is meant for the collective, and it's not meant to point at individuals. Mm. Also, as a projector. You, you know, we have this focused and penetrating aura, which is why we're supposed to wait to be invited. Right. So, so, you know, we have power, but in a very, very different way to how a generator could have power. The generator can have that, that building capacity to build and build and build, but we have this capacity to really penetrate with our aura. You may have seen um, the image that I posted in a, in a few chats of, you know, the, um, the X-Men, you've got that guy, Cyclops, um, who's got those sort of, he has to wear those sunglasses the whole time because he's got those laser eyes. Okay. That are just going to, you know, he's like, if he takes his sunglasses off or if they fall off and he's mm-hmm. like going to start exploding shit and burning people and, kind of, you know, okay. That, okay. that's the projector aura when it's yeah. not invited, you know, right, right, so right. It, it's, um, it's a powerful thing. So, uh, we, I was also just looking up your other channel that, that you've got down there connecting those two, um, those two centers. Um, and, uh, I've just lost it now, but, uh, let me just pull that up again. Um, what else are we going to talk about? What else would you like? You, you mentioned a little bit about the four, six profile and the sixth line. Would you like to just go through uh, cause you're coming into that final phase of the sixth line of being invited back off the roof. Do you want to talk a little about what, what, how that, how that, how you feel that's played out those, the three phases of life. Do you, do you get a, a feel for that one? Sure. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I first heard about that, it's, it, it seemed counter, my life seemed counterintuitive, counterintuitive. It didn't, it was one of the few things that didn't seem like it mapped directly on. But, I mean, you can't deny, Jesus, I mean, I went, I was 20 years, one job from 30 to 50. I mean, it's like, if it looks like it, if it tastes like it, you know what I mean? But it didn't feel like, I guess maybe I didn't understand the roof. Put it this way, I resigned the fact that that was my roof situation. I mean, I was really in a comfortable, I was in a a very small school, so it was sort of like a tribe size like not patriarchal but paternal fam- mm-hmm. like family you know with all the roles and and i think that that was my roof experience which i didn't know anything about hg and i wouldn't see it that way but i'm seeing it more and more because this is not the you know this is not the roof it doesn't feel like i'm off it or whatever but it's, it's becoming more clear about that the zero through 30, I mean, Jesus, I was just 
yeah, I was just running around banging my head against walls wherever. I mean, it was I, I was a big ball of experimentation, definitely. I don't know. I I don't know how much you're supposed to know about it, but from you know, I was pretty wild and I was a really good boy until like I wasn't until like seventh grade, and, <laughs> and like I went against it and 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 came around. But in my in my twenties, again, I had another sort of. It, if it wasn't not, it was indulgent. Let's put it that way. I had an indulgent twenties. I did try a lot and made a lot of mistakes. I I, I thank God I don't have to pay for them. Uh, it doesn't they're not on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the roof was, I mean, the roof was okay. And right now, I feel like I made a, like I crawled off the roof. It's kind of like I was like almost kicking and screaming, crawling off the roof, not knowing that's why I needed to leave until four months later. I was like, oh, okay. And, and I still don't have a plan, but things are, you know, falling into place. You know, for example, to think about, uh, I tend to think of them like first chakra issues, you know, the, the basic, the root, the uh, food, water, shelter. The, like the like basic the survival needs. that yeah, you survival. need to live. You yeah. get into survival mode or, uh -huh. or scarcity mode. I, you know, I've only, I'm going to last about another year with the money that I, I cast in my 401k. So I'm just living off of that. And Bitcoin's dropping on my screen as I'm as, as I'm watching here. So like, hang on to it. Well. I have to, <laughs> have to wait on for a while for that. Uh, but you know, for example, not and here's here's an opportunist. You know, I've never seen myself as an opportunist either, which is interesting because that's supposed to be my conscious line. But here, but here's one. I've recently met a woman through another friend who I have a really deep uh, spiritual connection with, and. Mm -hmm. This other woman and I are starting to get close, not in any romantic way whatsoever. Almost, her, her daughter's moving out of the house. It's almost kind of like a maternal like thing. And so she's practicing her uh, cranial sacral work on me. She's taken a big interest in my body. I mean, I haven't I haven't gone to yoga in five years because I can't raise my arm, my other arm up. Uh, because of that Jupiter and stuff, but so I haven't had a teacher tracking my progress, which is such a sweet relationship to have someone care about you over years, and you know, and so we have like an exchange going. Well, she's, she's I'm not like I'm a wonderful, pro, you know, I'm I'm really good to practice on. She's getting learning a lot, you know. She's really lonely. We're we're spending time with each other. I thought about what am I going to do when I, I've already had one woman offer me her house when I run out of money. Cause that's the first thing she said is <laughs> what you quit you without a job. Okay. You can live with me. And that, and now this woman is saying if, cause my energy is starting to go off and she's like, you know, if you need a place to stay, you can, she's got an extra bedroom. She's like, you can bring the cat. You can. So the back of my mind is like, wow not to not to ask too much but like the universe is already kind of putting it out there like i got places to go like i'm not sitting on the edge of a cliff here you know and the only way off is down you know it's that feels good where i'm just living she's told she recognizes me so much that's beautiful like yeah there's a little bit about this but the deepest 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 recognition that I do not, it's very rare. It's come yeah. along in my life. This is really That's nice. really beautiful. This is so beautiful. Yeah. Pascal Pascal was feeling you as well there. Like, oh, yeah. you know, like Great. you you jumped into waiting and and yeah. he, here you have this recognition and these these beautiful invitations. And, you know, I, I just love this, this feeling of like, you know, the whole system wants to tell us that we can't step off the treadmill because then we'll, we'll, we'll end up old and poor and on the sure. street. Like, it's like, fuck that. You know, it's like, it's like, there's plenty of people with rooms and, and there's, there's people who's it's so beautiful that you're seen and that, 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 you know, um, people, people are, are, are in that making, giving you those invitations. So that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm really happy about that. Um, yeah. it, it, it's, I think it's heartwarming for all projectors to hear these stories about how, you know, cause 
we, we know it can be tough sometimes, but also to hear, you know, I hear so much trust in you and, and so much, um, you know, just that, that commitment to just being patient and waiting, which can be hard, right? Um, whether it's, you know, choice or no choice, either way, um, that's, that's, I know a lot of, a lot of projectors, we, we might bookmark in the, bookmark in that in the, in, the, in the video, in the notes, so people can refer back to this point of like, hey, you know what, it does work, you know? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Success, it, right. There's, there, can be, there can be these beautiful invitations where, you know, it's, it's, it can take that weight off that, that you're not gonna, yeah, that you've, you've got that, uh, those, those options. Um, and and that there's that, 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 that from someone who values you, you know, that's a nice feeling, isn't it, to feel seen? Yeah. So, um, and your other channel I was looking up here is um, the fifty four thirty two, which is the channel of transformation. It's energy that's driven to work its way up the hierarchy or push forward change, um, and that's a that's an interesting. Um, that 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 gate has a very um a very strong tribal energy it it it's it, it can also like i have a friend who's a projector who was astounded because he thought he must be a generator because he's so like driven um and uh he he has the will but having that that center there is is really um yeah that, that sorry that those two channels that the two that, that that particular channel um which is the let me just get the numbers right. It's the 3254, yeah. The 3254, the channel of transformation. It's certainly a, a, a channel that, uh, I, I don't remember the exact keynotes, but it's got a, an energy of getting shit done, that, that, kind, of, that kind of energy there. Um, so um, I, just wanna, I just wanna dip back into the 4-6 the profile because it's the, the opportunist role model, right? So the four is conscious in black, and that's the line on the earth and the sun. It's the dot, it's after the dot on the top right. And then the sixth line is in red, it's the dot six, which is on the, the unconscious sun and earth. So conscious first, unconscious second. So it's four six, it's the opportunist uh, uh, role model. And, and the four is all about the opportunities that come through your network. So isn't that interesting as well that you've got this fourth line thing going on where these, these, these invitations to have somewhere to live are coming from your network of people, right? It's like, it's the opportunities are coming to you and you're being invited. So that feels beautifully aligned. Um, yeah. And the thing about the sixth line, you know, being as it's red, it is in the unconscious. So it's kind of something that makes sense. You might be less aware of it in your, with your conscious mind, but, the sixth line, I just want to, you, you, you talked very clearly about those phases and Andrea mentioned, you know, about the, the thing of, of your illness fitting in with that. But the, the, way, the way it is, is from zero to 30, it, it's zero to Saturn return, which is um, around about 28, 29, 30 is the first phase. So a sixth line inhabits, lives that first phase as a third line. So I'm a three, five, Andrea's a one, three that third line is all about making lots of mistakes, um, doing things in order to find out what's going to happen, ending up with breaking things, hopefully not breaking ourselves too much. Um, it can be especially intense for like a three, six or a six, three profile who lives the first 30 years, a three, three with all third line. Um, and, but for, for, a, for a sixth line, I think Pascal's a four six as well. So she's, I know she's listening to this as well. So for the four six, it's in the unconscious, zero to 30, make fuckloads of mistakes. And then 30 to 50, it's that time of being out on the roof, integrating all of that, you know, and maybe this is what's been going on in your body, integrating this, you know, maybe the maybe the mistake of your 30s you know mistake was was living as a generator pushing yourself being very competitive and then 30 to 50 it's about integrating that with your consciousness in your physical body emotionally and then there's this thing of at 50 being called down from the roof to be a role model to be someone who can who can bring your wisdom and that that's invited to come out of you 
And I'm just wondering if, if, if this may be present in these invitations you're getting from, from people to say, hey, come and live with me, because they, they maybe recognize that wisdom in you, even in ways that you haven't fully yet acknowledged that you have that, that wisdom as your sixth line because it's in your unconscious. Um, I mean, absolutely. With, the, with this new friend, uh, the first woman is an old friend. And with, with, with the new friend, she, she, it, it, it's recognition, like, just beyond the pale. I mean, she, she's super intuitive. So she not only sheds light on how the world sees me, but she has her own light where she sees me really clearly and in, a, in an extra special way. So there's, it's like, it's, it's it's a really nice pairing because I know how much he appreciates my presence, my energy. There there are things about me that I don't know. It, it's it's as if you're like you know emitting a, an odor or something, an energy that people are living, and I don't know it, but they very much do. So she's appreciating a lot about me, and I don't know what the hell she's talking about. You know. So I think that's what you were just saying, like. Like I'm not recognizing the projector, the I'm not recognizing the sixth line like she is. She's reckon. I've had other people that recognize me as a sixth line. And retro, you know, a lot of this is in retrospect. That whole, you know, not conscious self thing. Uh, well, Ra said this so clearly. Like Ra said this. He, I've I've heard him say it that as projectors, we 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 can often be that we, we, we our focus is all outside of ourselves. We're all about the other person who's in front of us. And that's why it's so powerful for us to come together like this, because we get to see each other. You know, it's like, exactly, it's like that thing of, as a projector, we can never really fully, fully appreciate our own magnificence, because it's all about the other person. Yeah. And so we do need, we need other people as projectors, of course, for energy, but also to, to have that recognition, you know. Gary Vaynerchuk often says that when you when he posts a video, he's this guy who's a projector with a quite a similar chart to mine. And he's very high profile on social media. And he always says he always puts your comments are like oxygen to me. And so it's almost like when people rec when people see him and they comment, it's like that pr that gives him energy to be seen, to be recognized. And I don't think we ever fully, just, just the same as we can never fully be deconditioned because part of who we are as projectors is to take in the other person, which is, which is not us. We can never really fully be deconditioned. And also, you know, we can never really fully know ourselves in, in the same way as we can be seen by other people. So especially with your sixth line being unconscious, that makes so much sense to me. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if you... If you do know your motivation, it feels like maybe it's even innocence. I don't know if you know what your, your motivation oh, is. I know. I'm starting to know a few things. I'm, I'm starting to learn and remember a few labels, but not much what they mean. Uh, would need be a motivation? Uh, your motivation could be need. That's the same yeah, as mine. It's need, yeah. I just uh -huh. don't know what it means. I, I just don't. Uh -huh. I, it, tra it, tra it transfers to fear, right? That's all yes, I it know. does. So yeah. Yumi and Andrea all have that same motivation of okay. need. Okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, yeah. You want, if you want to go along here, I have, and these things, I was just telling another friend last night, it's crazy, it all makes sense. My diet is, uh, is nervous touch. I mean, uh -huh. all my life, I've been eating with my hands, bagels, walking around, talking. Around, walking. <laughs> I, that's what I'm supposed to do. And then all the grief I've been getting my whole life that I eat like a kid, I'm just, I'm, I couldn't care less. And Dunstan, this is one of the things where, like, even though the whole world says it's so important to eat what you eat, like the right thing, deep in me, it's like, uh-uh. Like, and you know what? Yeah, it's like I got, I got affirmed. And also, mountains. So I live at the top of Manhattan. I said, okay, I live at the top of Manhattan, meaning 207th Street, doesn't go any further. At okay. The top of Manhattan elevation. Uh huh. And so you're high up. Next, yep. The highest point. And there's a forest a block away, which is the wow. old growth forest. And it's a huge hill. 
Wow. And I smoked pot. And I used to smoke cigarettes. And they were like, <laughs> oh, you guys can smoke. That's fine. Low, low oxygen, right? Also, <laughs> well, I, I got low oxygen because I've got, uh, what do you call it, when you don't have enough oxygen? Anemia. I have anemia okay. from, the, from the bone marrow transplant and also from these effing pills. So my, I've got no oxygen in my but and that's a good thing. I guess it's like, it's like keeping me mellow or something. I don't know, but the way that all of this comes together blows my mind. Like I, I was telling my, my, I was telling my friend last night, you know, like I can eat whatever I want and I'm supposed to smoke. You know what, like that's awesome. What, <laughs> who doesn't want to hear that? <laughs> you know? you've, you've looked into these things a bit more than I have. So I, I, I'm oh, not I so like, I'm just right starting right. to look into the environment oh, and the, and the diet. But yeah. uh, that thing we were saying about the mountains really, really resonates, right? It, it just feels yeah. really, I get it. And, and it's, I've heard this said that, you know, you're, you're in a it, mountains is a, is a landscape, whereas city yeah. is a hardscape, but right. even within a city, there are yeah. places that are shores, and they, it clearly is what you're saying. It's like yeah. a mountain. I'm right on the water, right? You're there. The most open space. It's the best yeah. I can do. Yeah, yeah. It kind of speaks. Yeah. Uh, e even before I was in HD, and we talked about deconditioning spiritually, with, the, with the, uh, one of my friends, when I came up here, one of our feelings was like, this is a really good place to decondition. Like this is not a, this to, is not like to mention being on the roof, right? Like you're on the roof. Yeah. Well. It's like you're up there. Yeah. All that bad juju. Like, I, yeah, it was great. And being, I stayed myself. in a place in, um, I stayed in a place in Bali that was overlooking a valley over a river and my, my, uh, my environment's valleys wide. And I, I quite liked it there. Um, and, and she had, uh, she, she's, she's markets. And she, one of the things that really, she didn't like that the valleys didn't work so well for her, that, that particular location, it's that kind of like openness didn't yes. work for her. Yeah. And, uh, but when she discovered that it was really interesting because she, she discovered that she had been without knowing that every day going to the markets in Bali and, you know, they, they actually knew her there and they got to know, you know, she didn't pay low, she paid more locals prices because she was no longer a tourist because she actually mm -hmm. had a personal relationship. And, you know, in Bali, the, the, in Ubud, the market is like a real hub of connection. And, and that would be nourishing to her to go to the markets each day. Um, That's awesome. So, so yeah, I, I love how these things happen. <laughs> Pascal's written something for us here. She's, uh, she's a mountain, mountain as well. And she's been really attracted to high buildings and mountain views in the last few years. The more you learn about human design, the more it's wow and it's mind blowing. Um, and you know, what's also really fascinating, isn't it, is that you look at who's on this call and, uh, we didn't, we didn't look at these things beforehand and, and Andrea didn't, you know, I don't think Andrea and you had compared notes beforehand, but you know, you've, you've got a lot of, um, you know, you've got the same thing with the food. You've got some of the same channels, some of the same open centers, um, you know, and then Pascal's got the same profile and same environment there. Um, so it's, it's no mistake how the the aura kind of pulls us together in the, in the right timing to, to experience these things. And uh, that's one of the things I love the most about human design as well is this thing of like, you know, how do we know who we're supposed to be in service to, who we're supposed to be guiding, you know, and it's actually, people think it's difficult, but it's actually of the types. It's the easiest because we know when they invite us, when we get recognized and invited, it's like, that's when we know, do you know what I mean? It's like, we don't have to figure it out. We just got to wait. And I, I really love that. Uh, I really love that, you know, as a, as a thing. So uh, that, I, that it's not, you know, I just, I just wanted to, to put that out there, Tom, because it's, um, sure. it's been so cool getting to know a little bit more about you. Cause you know, I've, I've spoken with you a few times in the, in the VIP projector group We're there. And um, now I've gotten a chance to meet you a little, I, I feel like I have a much better sense of who you are and, you know, Thanks for hearing this. It's awesome. You're so welcome. Like, you know, hearing some of the things that you've lived through is really inspiring to, to, oh, to, 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 to feel you like that in a, in, a, in a new way. And, you know, it's what James always says about how, like this, we get the chance to actually, you know, we can feel a bit of you. We can, we can, we can connect mm -hmm. aura to aura, um, mm -hmm. you know, get a bit more of a sense of, well, who is this guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, 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 are you reminding me that, uh, you know, I tend to, I've, I've been through a lot and, and I tend to speak 
really probably too freely about a lot of this stuff sometimes, but some of the things are, you know, are and can be taboo and or people tend to shy away from talking about them. I would like to invite anybody on this call or in the future, if you have any questions about cancer or bone marrow transplant or sickness or caretakers or heart surgery or uh, this Jupiterans disease, I have a thing called Peyronie's, which I'm not going to talk about in this call. It's related to Jupiterans, its own nightmare, uh, with let's just say that that aligns with the projector thing. You can look it up. It's P E Y R O N I E S. I have that. So any of this stuff, if you want to PM me or talk on the phone, I've done a lot of counseling for people who were dying of the shit and all that. So I've, I counsel kids and I'm just good listening and talking and I'll share. So please. Uh, me yeah, Tom, just the, 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 the kind of the, what I get is the grace and the calmness and how much at peace you are having been through all these things. This for me is absolutely classic role model kind of, you know, it, it, it makes so much sense with your sixth line. That cool. yeah. who, who could be in a better position to support mm. and guide someone else? Mm. Exactly. And Andrew's just saying you've got the cross of service. Mm. Who could be in a better position, and, and Pascal's agreeing as well, to mm. offer that guidance to others? Um, you know, and, and I, I, I know there's, there's other people in our projector group who, um, th there's Pat as well, who uh, her, 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 her work involves speaking to people in palliative care, but sort of counseling people as they move towards the, the final phase of their life. So, you know, these are things that, I mean, taboos is like a big, big bit of conditioning right who the fuck decides we can't talk about a certain topic like hey right. it's okay to talk about life and, and babies are beautiful but when someone's facing things that could mean their life oh no we can't talk about that because no one wants to because it's not people yeah. don't people might get uncomfortable well you know thanks for opening that up yeah sure you know that's this is this is this is this well, irregardless of human design, you know, these, these are, are topics that it's powerful that we can talk about them freely. Um, and you can share a little bit of, you know, and you, you, you've been very generous in sharing about, about that. And um, yeah, I could see how you could really be a, a, a massive asset to someone who's facing any one of those things. Um, so, uh, you know, and what, what, just one thing else to say is like, if you felt to maybe um, write out a list of some of the things that you've, um, this is an invitation. If you felt to, to just maybe, maybe WhatsApp me some of the things that the conditions and we could, mm -hmm. if you want to, we could put those in the description for the video. And I'm sure there'll be people searching who will, who will be like, Oh, I'm a projector and I've got this same condition well, that's um, perfect. <laughs> that, that, that may I find. I but yeah, I, there, it would be nice to have some good use of a long list of condition names and knowledge. I mean, it's it's not doing any good up in my head, you know. If I could right. have someone, that would be really right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Good. Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll WhatsApp you. I'll do like keywords. You know, I want to talk about any of these things. You know, there I am. Beautiful. I mean, I'll write that in. I'll write that in. And it's, um, okay. it's something that one of the aims of this series of, you know, because one of the reasons I started this is because, you know, a lot of a lot of projectors are like, oh, life's tough. We've got no energy. We've got no money. We're trying to decondition like it's difficult. But, you know, within this and, 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 and it, I, I totally get that. And then within this as well, we have this amazing capacity to be able to be present to others as guides. And especially for you as a sixth line you know, to be a role model and this is, this is your time. So it's, um, yeah. And Andrea's saying as well with your defined Arjuna in the throat, um, you know, that be able, being able to communicate that wisdom, those questions, those ideas coming out from your, from your, from your throat. So um, yeah. And I, I really see how, you know, and Pascal was mentioning this to me earlier when we were talking about how as projectors, you know, how do we put ourselves out there in the world as being available to be in service to others, but without like initiating or without like trying to be like a, a generator. And, and, and this is, this is, this is beautiful because we get to see, we get a sense of like, you know, each of the people who've, who I've spoken with, 
I really get a sense of, you know, um, and especially you, how you can really um, be, you know, what, what value you have to bring to others. Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw the one we did with Ron, but he's done a lot of work with medical marijuana. So, Oh, um, no, I should watch it. I've missed, I've missed a bunch of them. Uh, Ron, Ron, you say? Okay. Ron, yeah, I think he was like number four, but number I'm going to post all the links shortly. Cool. Um, right. But, you know, I, I get a feeling how like you two, you know, uh, both individually and, and maybe even together, um, you, you, you know, he's, 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 he's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of knowledge of that and he's helped, um, you know, even before it became more legal, he was helping with the medical, mar you know, the medical marijuana to help people with with different ailments medicine. and um, yeah, and you. things Good. with that, that awesome. plant medicine so uh, up, i feel there could be a connection there so up, yeah well thanks so much tom yeah, uh, are there any you, um Tim, this was really lovely i really really uh it was great every way around uh, it was great to meet you great to be here uh, thank you. I, I, I got my, I would do that, but I have a phone in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all I good. I got my it. selfie stick. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll take care. I mean, take care. I'll write down those notes as soon as I can. And yeah. And you. thanks as well for, for everyone watching and the comments, you know, the comments are like oxygen and, and, and also for those watching on the replay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. Best wishes, all right. Tom. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Go well. You too. See you, everybody. Recording ends now. <laughs>